Hi, I'm Shane and welcome to Rockin' the Planet, the show dedicated to bringing live New Zealand music to your television screens every single week of the year. This week we have a show full of great Kiwi music. We have music and an interview with John Williams, ex-guitarist from the 60s pop sensations Larry's Rebels. Then Shane Ragan said, John, you better come and be on my show. When Shane Ragan told me, you better come and be on my show. It's been a while since we saw you. Rockin' the planet is the show. And special guests Rick Ball and Harry Lyon from Hello Sailor chatting about the life and times of the late Dave McCartney and his memoir, Gutter Black. But first, just who has been rocking the planet this week? Someone who won't be rocking the planet this week is Sir Paul McCartney. He's had to cancel his tour of Korea and Japan due to some viral infection. Get well soon, Paul. More Beatle news. It's a black and white 1962 Rickenbacker 425 guitar that was owned by George Harrison way back in 1963 and used by him on the Ready Steady Go show and the recording of I Wanna Hold Your Hand. It sold an option for almost 400,000 pounds out of my league. At the same auction, more Beatles memorabilia. A placard covered in doodles drawn by Yoko and John Lennon during their peace and love-in in Amsterdam sold for almost £112,000. But the best Beatles news is that the movie A Hard Day's Night has been completely restored and will be re-released in cinemas and made available for download on July the 4th, along with a limited DVD release. Amazing, over 50 years and they're still outselling everybody else, the Beatles. Now, for our first guest this evening, we've got a man who was selling a lot of records around about 50 years ago himself, when he was the lead guitarist for his band, Larry's Rebels. John Williams called into our studio recently during his fleeting visit over the ditch to Auckland from Melbourne. John Williams, it is so good to see you here, mate. Thanks for taking the opportunity to catch up with me. Um, here this afternoon, and I know you're rushed for time, you've got sound checks, you're doing gigs and things, but uh, this is a very short visit to Auckland, but uh, great to see you back home. Great to see you too, Shane, Good as always. You. As always, yeah. Now, what are you up to? Um, I know that you're, you've, you've been in Melbourne now, you're based in Melbourne. Yeah, be, yeah, been based in Melbourne for a long, long time, since, basically since the, the Rebels era. Yeah. Right yeah. through, so the last 30, 40 years. Yep. And you've been playing up a storm over there, obviously. So they tell me. Yeah, I reckon. I've, I've heard you play lately. You're playing great. Thank you. You've certainly changed your style since the early days. I mean, those early days when you were with Larry Morris and, and uh, Larry's Rebels, as they were called, um, you had a, a real, I mean, incredible career going on yep. through that early period. And you, I believe, were still at school when you first joined the band. Well, actually, I didn't join the band. I actually started the band. You started the band. There yeah, you go. I know yeah. you were still at school. I was. I was at Seddon Tech, and I actually made a deal with my mother um, that if I sat school C, she'd let me leave school. Oh, what a good mum. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get school C, but I did get to leave school, and, left school. And, and get on the road because as soon as I left, we were off. Yeah. You changed your names. I mean, you started out as a group called The Young Ones. Young Ones. Uh, way, way early. It's still at school, like, like you were saying. And then The Rebels yep. was a totally different direction. Yep. The Rebels. Yep. Um, and you went down that road. And truly, you were Rebels at the time. Yep. I mean, you, you partied hard, I know, because I was seeing you on the road. Yeah. <laughs> we were partying hard. True. <laughs> and they were great times, weren't they? They were. They were fantastic times, Shane. In fact, I talk to a lot of people from the era, like how you and I have grown yeah. up with, and they all say the same thing. And I think that uh, I always used to say that when I was in my early to early to mid twenties, yeah. had I not uh, had I died or something, not died, I shouldn't say died, but had something happened to me, I would have been happy because I had a good time. I would yeah. never. Some people say, if you could turn back the clock, would you change things? Hell no. No. Hell no. no you can't. 
you can't live with regrets. And you know that, and you know that for yeah. first hand. Yeah, well, I mean, we we were doing something. We didn't know it was. We were playing it by ear. Yeah. Everyone was just charging along. This was a new thing. Yeah. No one had been in pop bands like this. Yeah. At that rate of speed, you know, we were flying along and we were going from one yeah. place to the other. And the we're early, only 18, 19 years old, you know. And the very very early days with all the. Um, you know, clothes were expensive in those days, as you know, to yeah. buy something decent, they used to get ripped off you and stolen and, yeah. you know, shredded by girls. Yeah, and one night I had three suits ripped, three different gigs, and I went back to the hotel for another suit, and the people on the desk went, what happened to you? I said, yeah. I've just done a show. Yeah. <laughs> and all my sleeve was ripped, yeah. and I went back, got another suit, and went back out the door and did another gig. That's <laughs> what it was about, wasn't it? Yeah, but that was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Or they try and get your boots or the rings yeah. off your fingers and yeah. things like that. They were clever. Shoes, shoes used to go because you know there's two shoes, and of course once yeah. one shoe's gone, it's you, you're over. Yeah. <laughs> go out and buy one boot. Yeah. All right, if you're Tom Sharplin. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Sorry, Tom. Anyway, um, so now let's come up to date where you are now. Um, yep. You've been ensconced in Melbourne all this time. Yeah. Um, now. You've gone to the blues and you're playing it marvellously. Um, is it, was it always in your blood or did you yes. really want to play the blues? No, in, um, in the early 60s when, when we'd already, already based in Melbourne, uh, the John Mayhill album came out which they nicknamed The Beano with Eric Clapton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once I heard that, uh, I went down to a place called Lou Tapano's uh, because Eric Clapton was playing a Les Paul. That's Nobody right. was playing Les Paul's mm. in that era. Mm. I was playing a white Telecaster, as you probably remember. I remember very well. And you couldn't buy them for love or money, and um, I ended up getting a 1954 gold top, which is probably worth, of, I don't know what it's yeah. worth nowadays, but... You still got it? Still got it. Wow. And um, I got it, it was about $120, and of course in that era, $120 was a lot of money. So I went every <laughs> week, used to pay $10, I think, or probably what, 10 or $20, mm. whatever it was. Finally got it, and that was the start of my blues. blues entrenchment and it's yeah. always been there and, and my style of playing is like the early Eric Clapton, Peter yeah. Green, it's that the cream system. area. And, and yeah, I've never gone away from it and it's just improved and just gone from yeah. there. And it's obviously your love and um, yeah. great. And you're recording at the moment? Yeah, we're in the process of a CD which will be finished probably in about another three or four or five weeks. Yeah. We're doing a live TV show um, on the 30th of May. This is in Melbourne? Yeah, Asylum TV. We're doing the whole show, nine, so nine tracks, oh, filmed live on, on location. And the CD's called, it's Double Shot of Blues and it's mm. 12 Bars of Live Blues is the name of the CD. Great name. And you've written a lot of the songs or is it uh, covers? Three quarters. But yeah. anyway, you look, you're still walking tall, mate. And uh, you've got a great career ahead of you still. Oh, I hope I so. I mean, yeah. you've got years to go and, and your playing, like I say, is exceptional. Um, uh, would you? Is there any chance of Larry's Rebels getting back together? Excuse it may. It may happen. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it's been talked about. It may happen, but I really couldn't say. No, it's only because of the fans out there. You know, they've got a lot of old fans out there that. Uh, but I can. Know. I can guarantee this though that something will happen in the not too distant future with yourself. Yeah, I would really look and forward to that. It, the two of us do something because that would be that would be that brothers. Would, that would be spectacular. As a young man. And another young man, we were always passed off as brothers. People would always ask me that question when we were yep. out on the Raz. They'd say, "Are you two brothers?" And one part, once upon a time, I had to actually show my belly button and say, "Look, it's different to his." And he showed his, and yeah, we both had couldn't have been the same doctor delivered us. <laughs> but, uh, Very true. Yeah, well, yours is a bad knot, mate. <laughs> Very true. Look, it's a real pleasure talking to you, John. I wish you all the best with it. And are we going to get you back here in New Zealand soon? Yep. Uh, we're talking about this year? Yes, we are coming back this year. In fact, uh, I may be back twice this year because um, Double Shot will be doing, um, we're just lining up with a few different promoters and stuff now. Double Shot okay. will be playing uh, on a regular basis, two or three, or maybe even four times a year. Great. So look out for the Double Shot Blues Band fronted by John Williams, ex Larry's Rebels and the Rebels. Um, the man is an icon, so uh, all I can say is, mate, great to have you here. Great to I'll be see you soon again. Thank you, Shane.
John Williams fronting Double Shot Blues Band. Great stuff. Now it's time for a reminder. You can join us at O'Hini Rao Street in Remuera at the CT Club on Friday evenings at 7.30. And be part of our studio audience while we film our live band of the week. Our next live band is Midnight Special with Kevin Greaves. I just recently toured with those guys and they are an amazing talent. And tonight I have to say we've got one of New Zealand's best looking bands ever. And uh, we've got two of the best looking in the band. We've got Ricky Ball and Harry Lyons from Hello Sailor. And I'm so pleased and so excited about it. It's good to see good you, to my see old you, mate. mate. Good to see you, Harry. Cheers, mate. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> it's off already. Now you know why they call them Hello Sailor. <laughs> All right. But um, it's great to have you here. And we're here to celebrate a book about one of your companions, your compatriots, and uh, Dave McCartney, this wonderful book, Gutter Black, that he's just released. Um, you guys have been around with him for all those years, and I believe that he worked on this book for at least 10 years before it's, it, it's finally out now. And, yeah, uh, that's right. He tells the whole story, uh, no holds barred by the look of it. I've had a, quite a good look at it so far, and um, you guys must have some great stories to tell about uh, working together as a group. Well, it was a long time, Shane, um, yeah, and I, I, mean, I met Dave in, in 1963, so quite aside from the band, we were, you know, we had a 50-year friendship. Yeah, now, were you, did you go to school together? You yeah. You were school together, I believe, yeah. Mm. So that's where you met and found your interest in music? Yeah, we had a little band there, we were 12. 12 years old. Yeah. And it was guitars, obviously. Well, Dave played the drums, actually. Really? Uh, Dave really liked the idea, and... Um, he, b he bought a drum kit because we didn't have a drummer. We had another guitar player. We okay. had two guitar players. So he thought, oh. I'll be the drummer. Yeah. We didn't have a bass player. Yeah. Just two but guitars and drums. You had dreams. Yeah. And they did come true. Really, they did. Yeah. So you formed a really close bond early, early days of your musical career. Yeah. And you, um, it's amazing. You stayed together all those years. Like you say, 50 years. You, you shared music, really. Mm. And um, now, Hello Sailor. That really formed around about the early 70s? 75, actually. 75, yeah. was it? Yeah. And that was, uh, you were obviously a Ponsonby band. You're known as the Ponsonby band, the Ponsonby band. And uh, were you based at the Glue Pot, or you started downtown here somewhere, I think? Uh, well, uh, we couldn't get uh, much in the way of gigs. We, d we did manage to get uh, four nights at the Trees Tavern and then two weeks in Napier. And pretty early on. Oh, that was in the Leopard. Inn. At the Leopard Inn. But I we got caught there in sort of 74, and I believe, yes, you guys had a little bit of a fracas there. Well, not a fracas, but we got caught um, <laughs> liberating some <laughs> bottles from the bottles <laughs> from behind spirits. the bar. <laughs> yeah. So um, we struggled to get any uh, any <laughs> gigs on the brewery circuit for a while. So we just started doing <laughs> we started just doing our own shows at, at like gym little yeah. suburban gyms yeah. and entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's how it started. And then we oh, got okay. then we got Rick in seventy five and seventy six. Seventy six, yeah. And that's you know we recorded um, our first single that year, and things were starting to move along. Yeah, because I think um, you saw us at supporting Melanie. Is that's that right? It's one of the first times at the town hall. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So we were starting yeah. to do it. And it was Stebbings that came to you first and offered you a record contract, was it? No, well, the, the first recording was through. Peter Fires at ZM at the time, okay. and they had a studio there. You remember oh, yeah, Broadcasting remember the House? Yeah, yeah, next one YA studio it was. It? Yeah. yeah, it was and rum and Coca Cola, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the song and the Calypso sort of yeah. feel. And then you progressed from there, um, but Steppings happened to come into the picture and took you to stu their studios, obviously, yeah. and gave you all the time you needed in the studio. Yeah, and that gave you the chance of really putting an album together and. Uh, creating something very special, obviously. Yeah. Uh, before then, we were at the Windsor Castle, we were playing there. I think my first gig was at the Windsor Castle and the Crypt. Yeah. We used to play at the Crypt for Full Warrant on a Monday night. And of course, we played all the drag queens yeah, yeah. and all the sailors, and <laughs> it was quite a rough sort of place. I think I played there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They well, still yeah, had no, the drag queens, the same <laughs> sailors. Was, was, yeah. it, was it Monday night? We yeah, Monday, it night. Monday night. There was a few people that used to come fly, you know, you'd be having a break and you'd be I think I was smoking in those days and having a cigarette and be up there. The stairs went right up to Queen Street and you see this huge fracas happening at the top yep. and some guy come flying down the stairs yeah. <laughs> and a deep Look out. at the bottom <laughs> Another and one. bounces a 
Yeah, I know. Elf bugger. Um, I funny, I remember you and I being thrown up yeah, up the stairs <laughs> out of there sometimes. <laughs> so there you go. But this man has always had a penchant for a raving. Mm. And yes, uh, I've had some great raves with you. But the band, anyway, um, you had huge success. And then there was a trip to America around about 1978. Yeah. I think that's when you guys went. Um, now, that was, that's another huge story. We couldn't cover it in 10 minutes, obviously. But, uh, and David Gapes from Radio Haraki, um, the founder of Radio Haraki, he took over as your manager and took you to America. Well, we had a, <laughs> about a nine or 10 bedroom yeah. mansion in Hollywood Hills. And we so lived, you lived the life? We lived the life. We yeah. had the swimming pool. We had the, the, you know, the pool and the, the tour manager and the cars and we did our gigs. But yeah. you never, we never made a lot of money up there. No. So we spent most of what we yeah. had. And most of uh, what David had. What most of <laughs> and, what, and what I had and yeah. everyone else had. So he, did he continue yeah. to be your manager when you came back? Or was no. It, it was that's no, where it sort no. of, that's enough, yeah. I'm skinned, I've got to go somewhere else and get a job now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite that bad. No, I'm not. Um, just, just. But um, no, we, Philip Mills took over and um, Les Mills and we came back to New Zealand to do a tour. Yeah. And um, the tour was, um, I think, was it, was it sort of a, What's the word? Um, I think we, we, we sort of overstepped our mark a little bit and booked huge big venues and, oh, and, and yeah, theatres yeah. around yeah, the country. Yeah. Uh, I think Philip actually got that a little bit wrong yeah. and we should have done probably clubs and pubs. Um, Which was uh, really is your forte. I mean, yeah. you've got, you like a close-up audience, yeah. hot, dirty and sweaty yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, uh, and a good vibe going. And uh, Gutter Black, um, Dave wrote it. Mm and a uh, fantastic song. Um, I read a little bit of the history there that he actually wrote it about his, um, his brother passed away or something. It was yeah, I he, think he the, was song was around, the song was around prior to that. I think it's yeah. more dedicated to his brother dedicated rather than written about him. Yeah. yeah. It started off as Sickness Beneficiary, wasn't it? It, it was called Sickness Benefit, <laughs> with a well, completely <laughs> different <laughs> set of <laughs> lyrics to start with. Uh, he'd had, he was actually, uh, in hospital or something, and he saw all the beneficiaries around him or something. He was inspired to. Uh, yeah, I can't something remember what yeah, he said. Yeah, but it's it was that. There, there were a few fairly hale and hearty young people around the place who didn't fancy working. You know, we're talking yeah, about exactly. the seventies and stuff. <laughs> so, um, the dole or sickness benefit was even better because yeah. they couldn't even think about getting you a job. So if you're on the sickness <laughs> benefit, you're sweet. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. as a musician, it's like subsidising the arts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> the late great Dave McCartney fronting Hello Sailor with his great song that inspired the title of his memoir, Gutter Black. Now look, we have um, a sponsor called Music Planet, a fabulous sponsor looking after us amazingly well. I know Roger. Uh, you know Roger? Yeah. Roger from Music Planet and they've got stores all out, you know, Green Lane. We go out to Green Lane every week and visit him and I grab a guitar and I like to show it to the musos and guys that we've got on the show. Now, yeah, you're a drummer, so you're obviously not going to want to hold that, on. so yeah. I'll pass so it over to Harry. The teeth. I can do it with the teeth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's lost right. his teeth for doing his Jimi Hendrix impersonation. <laughs> now, this is a G&L. I think it's called a Legacy, actually, and it's Leo Fender's last masterpiece, if you like, because uh, Leo Fender obviously had Fender, Fender guitars. He sold them off, and then he moved on to another company. Music making Man. Game, yeah. Music Man. And then, of course, he opened up G&L. And uh, that was his last, he was 90 odd when he died, 93. And he was at the factory still making these guitars, still working on them and uh, trying to modify them all the time. So these really are his masterpiece, all the way from Fender, all the way to G&L. And I just wanted you to try this one out because I noticed it in the shop today and I was there at Green Lane. Wow. 
What do you think? Tell That's me what nice. Well, I'm a kind of fender kind of guy. Yeah, I you knew know. you were. That's yeah, why yeah. I picked it out. I'm I a strat. Harry's a, Harry's a strat. <laughs> and I've got a, a Music Man amp. Yeah, so. there you go. Beautiful. drum was going to get in there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a beautiful guitar, isn't it? It is. It's nice over here. Yeah, so you get that at Music Planet and of course, and they've got a thousand guitars there. I mean, the mind boggles when I get in there. It's just, you go crazy. And of course, thanks Harry for trying it out. Now, I've got some drumsticks here that Roger, we were just talking about Roger oh, from Roger. Music Planet, oh, yeah. and I said, well, the drummer's coming and Ricky Ball's coming in to see us and he said, Give him with my compliments. He said, "Give him some of these drumsticks." Oh, cool! And, and I, well, I get to keep the guitar. And, and I said to him, "Harry's going <laughs> to want to keep the guitar now." And I, he said, "No way!" Oh, he well, said, that's he's going to get you some set of strings, Elixir strings. Oh, okay. He said, "I'll get you some oh, of those." But um, I know you play heavy drums. You're a solid drummer, man. Not, so well, not necessarily. You've got two I've sets. I've got weaker to in my old age. And I said, "Well, he'd probably want the heavier set." He said, "Look, give them both to him." That feels so good. On Roger's. Uh, I'll just have that. Okay. okay, look, why don't we just get you to play along as well? Well, you've got the drumsticks in your hand now. I set you up well. Uh, yeah. well we know where they go. <laughs> <laughs> where they be. It's a one, a two, a three, a four. four. <laughs> It's a Thanks, hit. Rod. Hello. Yeah, thank you, Roger. I like the feel of those. They're good. Yeah, they had a nice swing. Yes. Yeah. That was great, guys. Now, um, the future. I want to look at the future. Looking forward, uh, Harry, you're teaching music, of course, uh, and uh, good on you because you're showing the way to a lot of young musicians and budding musicians. And um, Is there a future? Uh, do I see you out live soon? I mean, people want to go and see. They still love Hello Sailor. Everyone loves Hello Sailor. So will I see you out there, even though Dave is not with you? Is there a future at all? Yeah, yeah, we've talked about it, and mm. it's just a matter of timing, really. It's, yeah. it's, it's only been a year, and it's, oh, quite, it's still it's quite raw for us, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's gone very And quickly. we've sort of been waiting for the book to come out. Mm. We didn't want to crowd that. Next year's our 40th anniversary year. Great. So well, we should do something for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we will. So if, if not for yourself, for Dave, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm sure he'd be there with you anyway in spirit. So we've we've got a, a corporate gig that we do every year in December. So okay. I think that's coming up. So that's something to aim for. <laughs> can I sort of get an? Can I sneak an invite to this? Just even though it's a corporate gig, I'd love to come along. And yeah, see yeah. Play, you know. yeah. I won't tell anyone. You've got to walk the plank when you come out. Yes. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? But it's you're a not easy crew. guys to socialise yeah. with, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this man lived. We flatted together one time. We and flatted we're still together. alive. We're still. And we managed to stay alive through it. They used to call us Ball and Shane. And uh, funny story, but um, every time I went away, I'd come home and he'd wreck my flat, um, <laughs> destroyed it. But we just laughed and laughed it off. And he repaired everything, I must say. He, <laughs> he always paid for the best. Ball and Shane. Ball and Shane. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Graham Brazier fronting Hello Sailor with his song Blue Lady. 
Yes, and uh, Graham, one of the greatest talents we've had in this country. And he tends to be a bit reclusive these days. And that's not good. We want to see more of you, Graham. But um, we've been great friends. I mean, you yeah. began way back now, I, if you don't mind me talking no, about that, we'll we go back right to your beginnings with The Challenge, I believe. Was yes. that the first band? That was the first band. And you were really um, yeah. a young. first pop band. You were young, but yeah. you were pretty, all of you. Yeah, yeah. What happened? Uh, no, well, no, you know, well, <laughs> you're still pretty, mate. You know, I mean, it, it's been a hard life, you know. Yeah. Well, I reckon. <laughs> You lived it to the hill, that's for sure. No, but there was a pop band, so that was the first, yeah, of course, second yeah. band actually. Yeah. But um, and then after that, I joined a band called Ticket. Ticket, a great with, band. With uh, Eddie Henson yeah. and Paul Wright, and we sort of with, we were an acid rock yeah. band. And um, any chance of those guys getting back together again? Yep, um, Eddie actually called me today. All the guys uh, well, are still around. Still aren't around. They? Yeah, yeah we did a gig like a Sailor gig. Um, Dragon. Yeah. A year ago, ticket gig. It? It yeah, a year and a half, a couple of years ago. Yeah. A year and a half or so ago at yeah. the uh, power station. So, so you've got that coming up. Yeah, doing a little bit of that, and I played in a band called Double Shot last week, which is John Williams. Oh, from did you play with John? Yeah, yeah, yeah John, John Williams, Williams yeah. from Larry's from Rebels. Larry's Rebels. Yeah. He came in. He's, he came in and chatted. With oh, really? us. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had a chat with him, and uh, he's coming player. back, and he wants me to do some songs with him as well. So it's going to be great. He's a great player. Oh, he's a great player. Yeah, he I went and saw him play. Good blues player, you know. Yeah. So we're doing all the blues standards. And of course, you had another friend of yours from the challenge, Gary Clark, was playing bass. Playing bass. So there yeah, you go. Yeah. So it's funny, we all come around and go around. We all go well, and we're really well aware that we've got the ticket rhythm section. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Know, like Paul and yeah. Rick. Paul, of course. Uh, That's the Paul engine isn't room. here tonight, mm. but um, yeah. yeah, Paul couldn't make it. But yeah, he's still there with you guys. Mm. Now, one of my fondest memories, I've got to mention it while I'm on camera, is with you, Harry, in Darwin. And it was with Dave as well. Oh, right. And uh, I had a hit years ago called St. Paul, obviously, you know, I live with it still. And it's great. But the, you, we were at the Air Force Base in Darwin that night, and you played a mandolin. You were playing mandolin, and Dave was playing acoustic. And we did St. Paul, like a country-style version, oh, which I'll right, never yeah. be able to recreate, but I remember it vividly thinking, this works, it's fantastic. And you were there, on the old... That was uh, that trip to Timor. Yeah, when we went yeah. to East Timor, but we went... We, we were in the army first. together. We were in the army. We should have got a medal for that one. <laughs> uh, lots of other great memories, of course, with you guys, but uh, I could go on all night talking about that, and I'm sure you guys could too. Yeah. And it's lovely having you both in the studio. I love you to death. You give my regards yeah, to Paul, yeah. and don't forget my little ticket or my way in. I'll walk the plank for you, and yeah. I want to see you in December. Yeah. Thanks, hello, sailor Harry and Ricky. Thanks, Shane. Cheers. Great Thanks to have you, mate. Good to see you again. Yeah, yeah, you know it is. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you love live music, you can join us, remember, at the CT Club every Friday evening, 7.30. It's in Ohini Row Street in Remuera. We party right through to around about 11 o'clock at night with the bands. And next week's live band is Midnight Special and featuring Mr. Kevin Greaves himself. Great band, believe me, the awesome talent. So I'll see you there. Well, there we go. Thanks for joining me here on Rockin' the Planet. I'll see you next week. Meanwhile, let's rock out with some fantastic Kiwi blues with Mr. John Williams.